before we start, I need you to pay close attention. I'm going to need you to pay close attention. I'm going to use sleight of hand to switch some cards. Let's start with this one. Watch very carefully. Now, one more time, pay attention. So how many switches did you see? Did you see six card switches? If you said six, you'd be right. But did you happen to catch the other things we switched? For instance, now I'm wearing a suit and my cards are blue, my furniture's gone, and everything behind me is switched. While you were focused on watching me change the cards, my team was changing everything else. Clear. It's evil, I'm sorry, we're all blind. That's called unintentional blindness or change blindness. We're all affected by it. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm Rich Ferguson, I'm a magician. You might know me as a magician, but I bet you didn't know that I didn't learn to read till I was 11 years old. And that gave me a very deep appreciation for human behavior. And today I'm gonna to share my greatest secret with you. Which is crazy because they say magicians don't share their secrets. So I don't know if there's anyone in the union here, but uh, no. <laughs> but I'm gonna be sharing with you more of a life skill, how to read human behavior so you can use it to apply it in sales, communications, hiring, firing, negotiations, poker, anything where there is a situation where there's something on the line, a stress factor, or a situation where someone might not tell you the full truth. But before we start, I thought we'd play a little game. I want you all to close your eyes for just a second. All of you, close your eyes. I've been up, here a couple, been up here in front of you for a couple minutes. Imagine what I'm wearing, but specifically imagine my tie. Is it dotted or is it striped? Imagine what color it is. Now open your eyes. Now a few of you probably got it right, but some of you might have been led astray by what I was saying. Of course it's black, I'm a magician. It's required by the union, all right? Not a big deal. But before we get into the whole program, I have to give you a, a, a warning. Body language and influence go hand in hand. But you can't try to influence somebody when it comes to sales or negotiations or anything like that without observing first. So the first rule of influence and persuasion is you must observe details and clues before you push your agenda. Otherwise, you're just a cheesy salesman and you're just pushing your thing on them without any regard to their needs, their fears, their beliefs, or whatever. So we're gonna start with human behavior from a body language standpoint, but since we're at a college and we're at this beautiful place, I thought I would give you a pop quiz. It's, I can see the stress on some faces already. It's like, you can trust me, I'm a magician, it's okay. <laughs> Maybe not. So quiz number one, there was a, is a person lying if they look up to the right? You've heard that a lot, right? It's very common knowledge, but it's not true. They could be looking at a lot of things. They, they could be looking at those balloons. There's no balloons. <laughs> you looked. You totally looked. I, I knew it. There's a lot of reasons people could look that way, but more importantly, the real takeaway here is you haven't baselined this person. You don't know how they tick normally. Maybe they're left-handed. Maybe they're right brain dominant. You don't know if that's where they look when they lie or if that's where they look to fabricate information. You don't know. So if it's commonly known that someone looks to the right and they're lying, well, did it, did it make sense that if they look to the left, they're always telling the truth? No, again, you don't have context, you don't know them. So the real secret to body language is evaluating a person and understanding their baseline before you make a judgment call. Because if you make a judgment call and call somebody out on something like, oh, why are you touching your leg there, are you nervous? Well, now that says more about me as me projecting than it does about the person. So always, always be careful on that. Now, if someone's staring directly at you, this is very common of compulsive liars. Be very careful. No. What does that mean? Are they lying? No. It could mean a lot of things. One, it could just be how they are socially. Two, it could be um, they maybe they're in love. Maybe they're awestruck. Or maybe they're just lying to you. Who knows? So when you go home tonight, if your significant other is staring at you a lot, 
they might be lying to you or they might love you. I don't know the answer. The fact is we don't have context. I don't want you all going home and fighting now, right? You don't have context. It really comes down to context and more importantly, the when. When does the shift of behavior happen? That's key. The fact that they're in a certain position means nothing. This all comes down, all this eye stuff comes down to the visual and auditory regions of the brain. Over 25% of our brain is entirely devoted to vision alone, and another 25 is loosely related to vision. So it's a lot of your brain devoted to this. So it makes sense that your eyes might track when I'm researching information from my database versus me fabricating it because I'm a certain dominant in my brain or I'm right-handed, stuff like that. So you can't base on, you can't take this information and say, oh, someone is lying because they looked away. There's a lot of reasons they might. Test number two. What's it mean if somebody's arms are crossed? Are they disinterested? Are, are, they, are they not listening to you? Uh, you know, that's the common thing you might think when it comes to human behavior, but this is just a snapshot. We don't know why this person's like this. If you came across this person and their arms were crossed, it means nothing to you because you didn't do it. Now, if you're trying to sell them something, you might want to get them out of this state because they will be more receptive to information if you can remove them from that state. However, if they're like this, and you say, yeah, the price is $13.99, and they go, oh, really? And they've crossed their arms. Now you have great intel, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the win. This is a great one. Is the person on the left or the right more confident and receptive to information? Now, a casual observation might say, well, you know, the person on the right here, he's leaning back, he's comfortable, his legs are crossed, he's got a smile on his face. Of course he's the one I want to talk to, and you'd be dead wrong. Let me tell you why. The person on the left is doing a couple things you might not be aware of, and this all comes down to subconscious behavior. This is key to reading people and gathering intel for you to create your best strategy and success for sales. On the right, his legs are apart. That's a very confident position. Now, it's different if he's next to you at a poker player and he's got his legs open and he's taking up your personal space. Now it's dominance. That's far different from confidence, and it's sometimes very misconstrued, unfortunately. He's also sitting forward. He's engaged, another subconscious sign of engagement. He may not even know he's doing it. But most importantly, the, the two things you're going to notice here is on the, on the left, his thumbs are up, and on the right, his thumbs are down. And that's a really strong sign of engagement and interest in what's going on. On the right, his thumbs are down, his legs are crossed, he's leaning back, all out of comforting himself. He's very nervous and he's not digging what he's hearing. And you might see that face, he's smiling. That's out of nerv nervous tension release because he's nervous with the situation. But then again, I just made all that up because these are snapshots, we don't have the context. But if it went from here to there, I know exactly what it means. And that's the key. Now I'm playing poker. It's my turn to play. It's not his turn to bet yet. Yet he's already mad dogging me. He's already got his hands on his chips. What does this mean and who's got the best hand? Let's evaluate it for a second. Well, I can observe a couple things right now. One, he's playing against a magician. Duh! Well, I don't know why he's doing that. He's going to lose his money. I can change the cards, so that's that. <laughs> but, moving on to body language, there's a couple things you might notice. One, I'm wearing a wedding, wedding ring. He's not. What's that tell you? I have someone to answer to when I go home. He doesn't. So he might play a little looser, more aggressively, take some risks. That's just something to observe. Has nothing to do with body language, but it is all about clues and assessing the whole package. A couple things you might want to note. He's mad dogging me. He knows he's doing that. He's consciously doing it. And when it comes to conscious acting under a situation when there's a stress stimulus, not just in general life, but when there's something on the line, you can just bet the opposite of what he's trying to portray. So that alone tells me his cards are probably no good. He's just trying to steal some money. Two, early in the hand, I'm holding my cards because they're valuable to me. You ever walk down the street and you see something kind of weird going on? You're like, oh, you just feel for your wallet? You always protect what's valuable to you, and it's a lot of times subconscious. And subconscious signs are key to this stuff. He's not protecting his cards. He's already been thrown out on the table. Now let's look at motive. If his cards were so great and he was, he's got the winning hand, why would he do things to intimidate me, to scare me from giving him more money? He won it. Test number five. Who's telling you less or more than they should? What's going on here? Somebody knows more. Let's see. How can I tell you this? 
Have you ever encountered a time in your life where you're talking to a young child and a couple other their friends and you already know the truth, like who broke something, and then you pin them down, you're like, Johnny, did you break that vase? And you're met with this. I don't know. Well, I was playing with Kathy, and she was playing with the ball. And then it's just a whole lot of talking and filler, right? One shoulder shrugs mean they literally are telling you half the story. <laughs> Put your shoulders down, sir. Okay. What message is being sent here? This is a perfect slide to demonstrate that other items can be an extension of your body language. Here, a woman is shaking my hand, but it's very delicate. Her fist is not in there. It's just her fingertips, very timid. But she's also confirmed this timidness by bringing up an item between us. It's called blocking. That lets me know in this particular environment or the setting or something we said is causing her to be very fearful of it. So I want to get her out of this f position if I want her to be receptive to information. This is my favorite slide because it shows how you can project or misread somebody based on just a snapshot in life. You walk into a situation, you see someone doing something, you're like, oh, why are you so nervous? Bad thing to do because you don't have the context. So here's the situation. This tall, good-looking dude shaking my hand, his hand's on top. Very dominating kind of position to be in. He's bigger than me, he's tall, he's good-looking, he's tan. What's he got to be intimidated by? You know, he doesn't need to be dominating. Oh, it's the hair. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. It's, no, sorry. Uh, but let's evaluate this. I'm going to give you two scenarios that end up in this exact same shot. One, let's say I put my hand out neutral like this to shake his hand at a business meeting where everything should be neutral and fair. It's a fair playing field. We should start off neutral and be open to information to each other. I put out my hand, nice to meet you, and he turns my hand and brings it toward him and squeezes it hard. He's trying to dominate me. I can tell you right then and there, he's not going to care what I got to say. It's all about his agenda. So what can I do? I'm a magician. I could do lots of stuff. One, his pocket's unprotected. I could steal stuff. You can't even see it, right? <laughs> I don't suggest you do that. From a body language standpoint, here's what you can do. He's got the control. I simply invade his space and put my hand on top, just like a politician. And guess what I just did? I invaded his space, let him know subconsciously. It's all under the, in the back of the brain. He doesn't even know I've done it. But the vibe sent is, I'm in control now. Thanks for trying. It's very cool. But that's not what happened here. That's not what happened, because I'm a professional observer. I already knew where I stood with this guy. Here he comes, he's seven foot tall. He's good looking. I'm like, okay, I, I got this guy's number. I offered my hand face up. I offered it that way, and that's how I got to this scenario. So it gave him the illusion of comfort and control, because I'm sneaky that way. So the strategy of body language is very simple. First, you identify if there is a shift of behavior or not and then decide what you're going to do with that information. That's completely up to you. If we had two hours to talk about it, we can talk about strategy. So now you've passed the quiz. Do you feel safe? you feel good now? No stress? I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to grade you. Now you've met the prerequisite for my super secret flow chart. And the one thing you're going to take away from today, today is subconscious tells. I'm going to train you to look for those and ignore everything else because they're always accurate, they always tell the truth, and they are awesome. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to stick on here for a couple minutes. Think about reading a person. You walk into a situation. Only two things can happen. One, they're already in that position. Or two, you put them in that position. So let's just go through this. We're going to start with the static side. The static side is interesting because you come across a person who is already in a position. You don't know why they're there. So you don't have context. And then also you need multiple indicators. You need other clues to tell you what's really going on. So you're going to be left with a vague outcome. That's not actionable information. Now, I have to back up for a second. It's really important to understand this pertains entirely to situations where there's a stress factor and when there's something on the line that someone may not be telling you the full truth. Very important. Because on the static side, you could, of course, just go up to your girlfriend and think, oh, why are you sad? And they'll tell you. This is under a situation where there's negotiations or poker or hiring or firing. This is different. So under this side of static behavior, you don't know anything. So it doesn't leave you with actionable information. Now let's go to the shift side. This is the world I live in as a magician. On the shift side, only two things are going to happen. Either it's conscious behaviors or subconscious behaviors. If it's conscious behaviors, you know they're doing it. They're thinking about it, just like the poker player. 
They know they're doing that, but they don't know they're holding their cards tighter or looser or moving their feet. So that's the difference between conscious and, conscious and subconscious. So on the conscious side, only two things are going to happen. It's either going to be natural and honest, and all the other clues also support that, or there's going to be overacting. For instance, you're selling something to somebody, and you finally hit them with the price. Yeah, it's going to be $13,500 for this used car. And they go, oh, yeah, you know. And then their feet retreat, their thumbs retreat, they cross their arms. Everything about them says, oh, no, red flag. But their face lights up. Oh, that's great. You know, I'm going to be talking to my wife tomorrow. We've got like, three other cars we're looking at. But yes, you're my man. I'm going to be calling you tomorrow. All that's acting, and it's overacting, and you can read it simply if you can compare it to subconscious tells, because the subconscious tells are always correct. They never lie because the person doesn't know they're doing it. That's why I want you to focus on the subconscious tells. So if there's acting involved under a stress situation, go with the opposite, and you're most likely going to be correct. It's very counterintuitive, but that is how it works. If it's natural, it's probably true. Either way, it leads to actionable information information you can take to build your strategy, to impre increase your sales, or whatever it might be. Now, on the subconscious side of things, and this is the one thing I want you to take away with today that is just awesome. They always tell the truth. They never lie. They don't know they're doing it. Think of the power and the gold of that right there. So a subconscious tale would be, I'm playing poker with somebody, let's say. The cards are dealt, they look at them, and they just subtly shift up a little bit. They might as well tell me their cards are great. Or if you're dating somebody and they're like, oh, you know, that sounds great. We should go out again tomorrow. But you see their feet retreat and crook around the corners of their chairs out of comfort. They're just saying stuff, but what they really feel is, I'm done. If you're selling something and you see someone's hands retreat or their hands go in their pockets and their thumbs disappear, thumbs disappearing, big sign of no good. So you're looking for subconscious tells. They always are accurate. And that is the key to success of reading people in magic in life. So the golden rules of body language are very simple. A, pos a p posture or gesture means very, very little without context. Subconscious signs are almost always true. And conscious signs, when there's that acting involved, are almost always false. So I'm going to leave you with a couple more ideas here that go beyond this, because we're talking about reading other people, taking advantage of situations, selling to them, negotiating with them, but you have to stop and realize you're only half the equation right there because what about you? So now we have to evaluate ourselves. So here's just an example. What message is being sent here? Here's a woman at a, a business mixer, let's say. She's got a fistful of business cards. Well, yeah, sure, she might not have a purse on her. She may not have an outfit that has pockets, so she's got this fistful of business cards out of just the situation. But the message sent subconsciously to the other person is still the same. So you have to be careful of what message you're unintentionally sending. So in this case, it looks like she's this, there to hand out her cards, and she doesn't care what you have to say. It's a very dangerous thing to do. Now, in this situation, who here has a desk? Lots of us have desks. Have you ever sat on the customer side of your desk? What message is it being sent? Is it intimidating or dominating? What's, what, do you, what, what does it feel like? Well, in this situation here, here's this guy on the other side of my desk who maybe I'm trying to negotiate with. I want him to open up. I want him to be receptive to my information but he's going to be 25% less perceptive to my information if there's junk in the way and it's blocking him off and making him feel less superior than me. It's not an equal battlefield. So what you want to do is clear your junk away and sit on the other side of your desk and look at it and go, does this feel inviting? Or just get up and leave your desk. Or better yet, if you want to push this person into a corner and this is your objective, then by all means, crowd your desk. Just leave it, you know? There's so much more I could say, but I just hope that I've helped just expand your horizons when it comes to body language, especially subconscious tales, because they are gold. My name is Rich Ferguson, and I have one last thing to ask you. Um, keep your eyes open this time, but just tell me what color my tie is. <laughs> <laughs>